I'm really surprised, I have to say, that so many people watched and not only watched, but also commented on my video about my experience in California. Well, not just about California, but on the West Coast of America. And I want to make a point here. I think some people didn't understand. This wasn't the only experience I didn't have. I wasn't clear enough about this. The truth is more than 10 different people took us into their homes while we were there. That's a huge number of people. And it wasn't just more than 10. We had offers all over the West Coast of America. So to all of those of you who helped us, said hi to us, all that stuff, I just want to say a huge thank you to you. And all of you guys who commented on that video, your comments, I really enjoyed reading. It was actually the first time I've... <laughs> read and responded to every single comment and it took me a long time because it was more than 600 comments on the video however to those of you there was a few of you who said i looked better back then without a beard yeah maybe but that was 12 years ago i'm 41 now i was 29 then or maybe 28 i think everyone looks better when they're younger so yeah that's worth considering anyhow thanks for watching Hello, my friends. Welcome to the channel. Great to see you. Welcome to all the new subscribers. Thanks for coming on board in the past 18 months. You're all new. That's the truth. Every single one of you is essentially new because, you know, this is a new channel. We only started just over a year and a half ago. Now there's 100,000 of you. Thank you so much for tuning in and supporting the freaking electric revolution because it's coming, my friends. Renewable energy is coming. And if you've subscribed, to the channel simply to be the one percent that troll the channel well you know what the joke's on you now 100 companies are calling for 1 million evs in australia by 2027 for those of you guys in the us in canada mexico uh what are the other countries that watch this channel there's a fair few in europe the uk you're one of the biggest supporters of the channel thank you guys in the uk to all of you guys Australia, yeah, we are still a very much a backwater when it comes to electric vehicles. But realistically, I actually think that comes down to one thing. Manufacturers like Volkswagen, Toyota, all the big companies just said, you know what, we're not going to sell EVs in Australia because we are paying, basically, we're paying Tesla hundreds of, in fact, it's in the billions now of dollars in order to, uh, you know what, avoid fines in China and in Europe. A big part of Tesla's income comes from these morons who are basically polluting the atmosphere and they're having to pay Tesla for their ZEV credits. Whatever you want to call them, it doesn't really matter. You get the point, right? In fact, in 2022, Tesla will make about one and a half billion US dollars from other car companies paying them for the credits so that they don't pay fines, which are going to be more expensive than paying Tesla for the credits. I find all this pretty funny. Now, the thing is, right? Australians would be buying more EVs. As you can see, look how many Model Ys they're buying. Look how many Model 3s they're buying. Look how many BYD Auto 3s, even though that's been a really disastrous rollout they're buying. Australians want EVs. But we haven't been able to get many of them. Now, one of the key reasons for this is because we have basically zero emissions rules here in Australia. It's, it's, it's basically the Wild West. What about if companies are like, why would we send our EVs to Australia when we can send them elsewhere and that'll help us avoid paying fines? Australia, they don't have any rules. Just send whatever your polluting vehicles are to Australia. So now 100 companies are trying to make that change. And the truth is the government, we have two sides of government here. We have, we basically have Republicans and Democrats. They're called liberal government, which is essentially our Republican party and labor, which is essentially the Democrats. It's, it's pretty much how it works here. It's not exactly like that, but pretty much it's like that. Right now, we have labor in power. So the Democrats are in power right there in Australia. And yes, they have, in, they have brought in some new rules for EVs, but the truth is those new rules are, they're nothing like what we've seen in the US. They're nothing like what we've seen in countries like in Europe, where you, 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 you can get a 7,000 US dollar, 7,000 euro, discount on your electric car. It's, we don't have anything like that in Australia. What about new, you guys in New Zealand, right? You guys get $8,000, nothing like that. Our government, they've talked that up. They've made a lot of fringe benefits, tax exemptions. That doesn't, it's not relevant to most Australians. So yes, our government isn't really taking EV seriously. And unfortunately we have, well, we have these government, we have states, right? 
the same situation as you guys in the US and obviously as you guys in the UK and Canada and everywhere else, we have the same situation when we have state governments in control. Our state government here in Victoria, they are Democrats, they're the Labour Party, right? And you would think they would be supporting EVs. Now, yes, you can get a $3,000 Australian dollar, so $2,000 US dollar credit when you buy an EV, but the Victorian government was the first government in the world to decide they needed to have a tax on electric cars. So electric cars are taxed on how many kilometers you drive. The more kilometers you drive, the more the tax is. Now, are there any taxes on EVs in the US? No. Are there any taxes on EVs in Canada? No. Are there any taxes on EVs in the UK? No. Are there any taxes on EVs in China? No, there's not. Hang on, China, they're big and they're bad and they're terrible, but they're not taxing EVs. Daniel Andrews, our president here, our prime minister of Victoria, our leader of Victoria, he's decided in all of his wisdom that we need to tax EVs. Now, obviously, the government here is under a lot of financial pressure. They spend like no tomorrow, so they need to find a way to get the money back, and that's one of the ways they've decided to do it. As submissions close for the Australian government's national electric vehicle strategy consultation paper, 100 companies have called for several key actions. Now, some of the companies in this list truly strike me as bizarre. One of them is BMW. I mean, BMW CEO Oliver Zips just said the future of the vehicle industry he believes is likely to be hydrogen. Very strange to see BMW make that comment and then say they're all in for supporting EVs. I'm, I'm baffled by that. Anyhow, in a two-page ad taken out by the Electric Vehicle Council, 100 companies, and most of them massive companies, have called for 1 million EVs to be on Australian roads by 2027. We've got a long way to go to get there. A raft of automakers are among those supporting the goal. They include BMW, BYD, Jaguar. I'll be surprised if Jaguar still exists in 2027, but you never know. They did have the World EV of the Year, although that's almost extinct now. LDV, MG, Polestar, Renault, Tesla, and Volvo. That's just a few of them. Other companies expressing their support include Toyota. No, just joking. Toyota didn't sign this. They're not interested in supporting EVs in Australia. You just, did you believe me when I said Toyota? I want to know, guys. When I said that first thing, we, did you go, Toyota, what? Really? Or did you just believe me? Let me know in the comment section below. I want to know. Other companies supporting. Europe Car. Hertz. Charging infrastructure providers like EV, which is one of the biggest in the world. Jet Charge, Tritium, they're a big company as well, and other major companies like IKEA, Origin, Uber, and Woolworths. Guess what? I just went and bought some groceries from Woolworths. Woolworths, I chose you over Coles. There you go. It works, right? In addition to the 1 million goal, the companies are calling on the National Electric Vehicle Strategy to include fuel efficiency standards consistent with the US, New Zealand, and the European Union. In other words, actually having some standards. That would be a good start, right? Have some standards. Let's have some standards, Australians. A coordinated rollout of a charging network for cars, trucks, and buses with a focus on the region, suburbs, and high-density buildings. I would say just to our Prime Minister, just give Joe Biden a call. I don't know. Just, I mean, you could call others, but you could call that dude, right? And, you know, sure, he's a bit sleepy, but you got to admit, the EV charging rollout that's about to go out in the US is a thousand times better than our ridiculous plan. Here's our plan. It's a joke. The Australian government is spending more on hydrogen. <laughs> I can't believe I'm saying this. More on hydrogen fueling stations for future trucks that don't even exist now than they are for EV charging stations. Seriously, that's, that's true. True story. In addition, these 100 companies are calling for a collaborative EV industry development plan to boost investment in electric vehicle manufacturing products and services. They're saying, you know what, Australia, we mine, we mine mountains of lithium, right? Why don't we actually make batteries here in Australia? That would help us to have a manufacturing industry, which has basically almost died over the last 20 years. They're also calling for more support for electric buses trucks and other commercial vehicles for Australian businesses, and for economic modeling that takes into account the benefits of EVs such as reduced pollution, better fuel security, and the potential manufacturing opportunities. Interestingly, none of these 100 companies called for anything to do with hydrogen, hydrogen refueling stations, hydrogen anything. There wasn't anything mentioned at all about hydrogen. So why is our government spending more on hydrogen than electric cars? 
You tell me what you think. To the end of September, just 21,771 fully electric cars have been sold in Australia, putting market share at 2.7%. Of those, well, yeah, you can imagine more than 80% were Teslas. The federal government says EV uptake in Australia is nearly five times lower than the global average. Citing the example of New Zealand, where in the past EVs have gone from 2.5% of new registrations to over 11%. Now, if the federal government is citing that information, why don't they just do what New Zealand's doing? It wouldn't be that hard, right? As transport is Australia's second largest source of emissions, EV uptake is critical to reaching the goal of net zero emissions by 2050. Did you hear that? Transport, the single largest source of Australian emissions. The overarching goal of the strategy is to increase EV uptake in Australia by incentivizing automakers to directly send more of their vehicles to Australia through having new fuel efficiency standards. And of course, we could have much better incentives here for EVs. We have a much better charging network if the government starts taking them more seriously. Now, I know a lot of you who watch this channel, we're talking here about Australia, probably support the Labor Party. And you're probably going to unsubscribe or go, oh, I don't agree with the electric Viking. Oh, I love the Labor government. But this is not about politics. I don't care about politics. I don't care about Republicans, Democrats, Labor, Liberal, Tories, whatever. To me, that's irrelevant. To me, this is about policies. To me, I don't care which form of government you support. All I care about is whether or not you support having a better world. That is what matters. Politics are not. The research paper on this said, the transition presents enormous opportunities for Australia. For one, we won't any longer be completely dependent upon foreign oil. Australia has the mineral resources, capital, and the skills to assist this. Referring to our copious minerals such as lithium that are vital for electric vehicle batteries and for energy storage. And it lists value add opportunities, including Australian manufacturing of EV batteries and other components for exports, rather than just digging stuff from the ground, putting it on ships going to China. Examples of companies already doing this include world leading DC charger manufacturer Tritium, electric truck maker SEA Electric, Nissan Australia, I'm not sure how this is great considering I don't know if this is going to be around soon, but anyhow, apparently Nissan actually casts EV components in Melbourne. So that's cool. The paper ends with this, health benefits. Given greater adoption of EVs, the air pollution we're seeing in Melbourne, Sydney and Brisbane will drastically release, will drastically reduce within a short period of time. Air pollution due to vehicle emissions may cause more deaths than the national road toll in Australia. It is also linked to health conditions including respiratory disease, cancer, and dementia. There are numerous studies supporting these facts. The paper also mentions the need to increase the nation's fuel security by becoming less reliant on imported petroleum from countries like the Middle East and China. Now, what I want to know is, what are your thoughts on this? I personally have to say to those 100 companies, there's a good chance you'll be getting my business over the next few years. I support you supporting the world being a better place to live in. Just makes a lot of sense to me. Coles, why aren't you on this list? Guys, let me know your thoughts in the comment section below. Thanks for watching and have a great day. Bye-bye.